do it. Hey, I usually hey. do a countdown, and I just like started. I'm just like all over. <laughs> Not as bad as last week, because at least I'm on video this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let go sunday shifters welcome to the shifting of gh we have both we both have been so busy that we both just caught up on all the episodes like last night and this morning mm-hmm. so it's kind of fresh but also kind of i forgot about some things so right. we're gonna see what happens <laughs> <laughs> how are so- you doing um, today has been a crazy week in Oakland and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> um, other than that, I'm doing pretty well. Um, I went on a bike ride yesterday to Target and found that Target doesn't have Target smell anymore. So I'm disappointed. Okay. Um, you know how like certain businesses when you walk in and there's just a familiar smell. And you know who used to have a smell? Bars and Oaks. Oh, Payless? That used what to have a good, smell. Did they have a good smell or a bad smell? A nostalgic smell. Okay. For me, <laughs> Target and Barnes and Noble. Oh. I go into Target and it smells so good and I just be breathing it in. And I stay in there all day. And so yesterday I needed to get some ink for my printer. I figured I'm going to, I'm going to ride my bike to Target. I rode Charlie. I didn't ride Venus. So I actually (laughs) um, put in a lot of energy into riding out there and I get in there and there's no Target smell. Mm. And I was disappointed. I was like, ugh, I'm probably only going to be in here for an hour. I'm sorry yeah. that happened to you. You know, I bought a couple of things that I didn't need. Obviously, that's always going to happen. I bought some Star Wars stationery and school supplies. I'm not going to school. That. But I bought it. <laughs> you did that. And so that's pretty much it. I bought a couple of hair product stuff, but. Your hair is looking very luminous. Thank you. But it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't the same Starbucks experience. I mean, it's Target experience. I haven't been in a Target in a long time. I did go see, so I'm in Milwaukee now um, until next week. So I got to hang out with family. Um, did some things that were like businessy things and taking care of like arrangements and things like that for not great family stuff, but also spending time with family was has been really nice. Um, so me and my sister went to go see Barbie. So that was fun. Um so it was a movie theater that used to be here kind of pre-pandemic and then it closed down and so now they're like opening like a new company bought it because I was like wondering like dang this is like a really nice theater it's so surprising that it just like closed down I didn't realize it was like the soft opening (laughs) and it was a very soft opening like they just didn't have a bunch of stuff Uh um yeah but it was fine went to go see Barbie enjoyed it a lot um and just have been like enjoying soaking up family time before I come come back to Oakland. I'm glad you enjoyed Barbie because I was just wondering like what is the huge deal with Barbie? I mean, I mean it has surpassed so many expectations. I wasn't necessarily into Barbie as a kid. Mm-hmm. I was one of those tomboyish girls who liked to play with you know sports and things. And I had all the dolls. My mom and my dad bought me all the dolls, but I only played them when I was around other girls. Okay. <laughs> so um, so yeah. I never was really into the whole Barbie culture. And now it's just like blown up. Mm-hmm. The marketing was great. I mean, on point. I mean, and, it was uh, so good. It was so good. You, you, can't, you can't avoid the marketing. Um, but it's like the number one movie across the world. And I'm like, dude, I need to go and watch Barbie to find out what is up. <laughs> we enjoyed it. Um, I will say, I mean, I enjoyed Issa Rae because I always enjoyed Issa Rae. I've been like an Issa Rae stan since uh, Miss Adventures of Awkward Black Girl. So if you never got into that web series, do yourself a favor and go on YouTube 
and yeah. just watch the misadventures of awkward black girl what a time you get your you get your life together and watch that show because yeah. your life is not together if you haven't watched that show so good but i've been a fan since then yeah. um and then so that's been oh it's been at least 10 years right it's been a while it's been a long time um yeah it's been at least 10 years and yeah. so uh maybe probably more actually anyway um so she was great and i enjoyed everything about her so happy to see her success ryan gosling was he committed this man <laughs> <laughs> I loved everything about what Ryan Gosling was doing. It was because, like, it could have been like, I don't know, it could have just been a different performance. But everything he did was amazing. Okay. Um, and I didn't realize um, that Sibby Lou was going to be in so much of the movie. Mm. Um, so yeah, I I recommend it. I thought it was good. Um, I won't spoil it because it's such a hard movie to talk about like what it is without spoiling it. And I'm glad that nobody did. I muted everybody and nobody told me anything before I saw it. So I could like take it all in. Good. Well, then I'll try to check it out. As you should. You ready to talk about GH? Yeah. Sure. All right, let's get into a recap. Well, before we do that, I just, I, I, you know, we don't usually talk about other shows. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, my God. YNR had a great scene this week with Phyllis. I heard uh, YNR's been giving. Yeah, it's been very giving. So <laughs> shout out to YR. <laughs> I don't watch it, but I've heard great things from everyone who watches it. Classic. Okay, I'm go ahead. Man. I mean, you know, Michelle Stratford, she knows how to play crazy. Right. <laughs> like she... Crazy and problematic as hell and does not understand. And she never understands why she gets so much grief. But Michelle Stafford understands that character. She's like, okay, already. She goes on social media and it's like, okay, I know y'all saw this week. Don't blame me. I am not Phyllis. This is you know all this stuff. She just be warning folks. Like she understands how problematic her character is. And so There's yeah. something so refreshing about people who are willing to just play their characters as 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 they are. That's one of the reasons I've always loved Sammy Brady. You know, she's she, from days, and we'll talk a little bit more because we're gonna talk about recast in this episode, yeah. but um, I've always loved that character because like she gave you a little bit of heart and you could feel for her, but that girl is a mess through and through. Yeah. And there is something really nice about just a messy mess. Mm-hmm. All right. GH. Look, speaking of mess, we start the week with Gladys being wild at the pool. Uh. Sam puts her on notice that she knows something is not right with the Sasha situation. Mm -hmm. Sam also sees Maxi and suggests that uh, Maxi buy Lulu's house, and Dante approves. Maxi's kids also <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, badass kids! <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Sam who was like, "I got ice cream and I got wine." Which is like, which... <laughs> um, the kind of friend we all need. Um, Cody tells Diane that he will not be pressing charges on Sasha. He sneaks into Ferncliff to see her with BLQ, but Sasha is drugged up by Dr. We Want Him Dead. I don't even know his name. He's just Dr. We Want Him Dead. Um, and he attacks Cody. Um, the, Sasha had put together that she didn't um, start having issues until she got, got Dr. We Want Him Dead's pres new prescription. Um, mm -hmm. And then the doctor attempts to gaslight her into believing she relapsed in this story. Mm -hmm. um olivia offers to plan the sona wedding okay girl um carly <laughs> comes to see, carly comes to see olivia and they reaffirm their friendship olivia tells carly that tracy wants her to commit ned but she refused building some trust between olivia and ned or eddie main if you will uh carly and olivia go out uh to the bar and they run into eddie hitting on various women including Carly. Also there, Austin's deep voice bald head cousin <laughs> who ends up being a bigger creep 
than we thought he was. Right? They get into a bar fight. Carly with the bottle. Uh, Dante, they, they end up in jail. Or not jail, at the PCPD. Dante signs out Olivia. Sunny signs out Eddie Main. Carly refuses Sunny's help. It stays to wait for Joss. We know where Joss is. Um, <laughs> Nina is upset that Sunny left without telling her. She calls Ava, and Ava said, girl, uh, this is a mob boss you're dating. Mm-hmm. Valentine goes to visit Spencer and Ace, and they decided to redefine what it means to be a Cassidy. Spencer helps uh, Trina move back into, um, as Tara would call it, the clanchin uh, with her mom. And Portia promptly, promptly puts him out without letting him say bye to Trina. Portia. Finn helps Trina see Curtis before he goes to rehab. Finn also asks Liz to be Violet's guardian if anything happens to him. How romantic, I guess. <laughs> uh, Cyrus gives up all his money. He's being side-eyed by his brother, Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, and Cyrus may or may not have some sort of connection to Austin because they exchange looks when Cyrus is being taken back to Pentonville. Anna literally connects the dots and realizes that there's a connection between Valentine, Sonny, Pikeman, and the WSB. She confronts Valentine with his information and he comes clean. Anna goes on a night run and comes back to her house on fire. Fire. <laughs> it's like I had so many fire songs. It was like the roof, the roof is on fire. <laughs> I had Pikeman started the fire. Like it was just so many. <laughs> Very silly Sunday for both of us. <laughs> well, you know me, I can find a song for everything. I do know. I'm like, already, I'm like, we about to get flagged. Anyway, <laughs> um, maybe my bad singing will keep it. Um, yeah. yeah, how did you feel about the week and what was your favorite moment? I had a couple. Um, I had a couple too. The week was all right. Um, I can't, I'm trying to think of a new creative way to talk about the dust. Um, I wasn't sneezing. There was some dust in the air. <laughs> but it was okay. Um, I felt, yeah, it was an okay week. But, uh, you know... Young and the Restless caught my attention the most this week, so, um, but it was still entertaining, um, GH, so there's some great, you know, action scenes, um, it wasn't as calm as it was previously, so we had the fight, we had the fire, we had the jail time, so <laughs> it, was, it was a lot going on this week. Um, favorite stuff for me? I liked the conversation recapping Olivia and Carly's friendship because oh. I just forgot just how long they have been friends. You know, I always think of their friendship as a real, really being deepened ever since she um, partnered with Olivia on the Metro court. But, you know, I forgot about their beginnings. So that was a good recap for me. And I think we're probably going to see a lot of recapping stuff um, because of the strike. You know, this was a good recap because it's not something that had happened yesterday or the last week, but it's actually going over time. Yeah. And so that was good. Um, I loved Olivia standing up for herself against Mason. That dude, please. Um, but, you know, Olivia showing some moxie and not being weak, but being very strong. I also loved her standing up to Tracy against committing Ned to Olivia has been doing a lot of weeping and crying and feeling sorry for herself this week. So I liking her standing up and having some backbone. Um, so I'm appreciating that, you know, bringing her back to that. Um, and then also Sam facing off with Gladys. Mm. (laughs) Gladys was out of the pocket. And I almost wanted to see Sam smack her and beat her down because 
It's not good. Now, one more thing to say to Scout. Sam was going to throw her ass. going to whoop her ass. And she, she, she was like, is that a threat? Yes, that is a threat. <laughs> it's a promise, lady. Let me talk to my daughter in the old kind of way. I like that. So, yeah, those mm-hmm. were my favorite. It's funny. My favorite scenes mostly involved women standing up for themselves against some, mm-hmm. like, bullies. So, yeah. Which we love for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, my favorite scene uh was the bar fight i loved the bartender it was so absurd like the bartender sliding the bottle here you go here you go i know you wild and carly because like that's the thing about both sam and carly they're both scrappy some of their best stuff has been fighting each other like yeah remember there was like a fight a few like years and years and years ago it was Carly and Sam in the penthouse and they were going at it and um Diane had to come in and break them up like what is wrong with you but like so the two of them can get scrappy and so what I loved about it especially with the bar fight was that Carly wasn't getting scrappy with a woman she was getting scrappy for her girl Right. Uh, and that just to me just shows a little bit of growth in that character but not too much growth that she she won't get down and dirty she was like look i might have that rich bitch hair but i'm gonna uh, drink my beer not in a bottle i'm gonna drink my beer from the bottle and then i'm gonna, I'm gonna use this bottle over this man's head so i just really enjoyed that um mm-hmm. I enjoy friendship scenes, you know, like I've always been a Trost fan. I'm a fan of uh, the Olivia and Carly friendship, especially because it goes both ways um, with both of them supporting each other. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when they put women in Carly's orbit, um, like we've seen it with Sam, like it's so much about just supporting Carly. And I I like that Olivia and uh, Carly's friendship is about supporting, about them supporting each other. Yeah. Um, and I loved the Maxi Sam scenes. I think, um, you know, it's just like, it's just like a great um, reminder that these characters are friends, mm-hmm. um, that they've known each other for a long time. Um, that they've been roommates in the past with like Maxi living in the penthouse um, I, with Spinelli. So I just really enjoyed um, their scenes together. I enjoyed the realness of how w- wild Maxie's kids were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James, why do you have a boy name? James. James. <laughs> no. Sam is, why do you have a boy name? Close to Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or like him, like Maxie, like knowing that he's behind her with the ice cream, which is right. I just love it to think about like the growth of this of the Maxie character, this person who was like wild, like <laughs> having sex with Lucky for pills, like all like you know all of that, to now being this mom of three who in like this like mogul her job, right? Uh, so just like being a longtime fan of that character and like seeing her growth and seeing that she maintains that relationship and friendship with Sam was really really good to see so those are my favorite things this week yeah it's almost a little bit of karma her having wild ass kids right now I'm sure she gave her parents a lot of headaches so yeah (laughs) I'm thinking about Maxie cussing out Felicia at Georgie's funeral (laughs) funeral yeah I mean her kids are still young but ooh. (laughs) <laughs> oh, about to give her hell <laughs> right yeah <laughs> definitely uh, <laughs> Bailey Cassidine <laughs> it's gonna be amazing um, what is uh, what, what, who's your performer of the week um, of, well definitely uh, Sophia Matson. I think what Obviously, we don't like this storyline for her, but she's doing amazing at it. I love the scenes where she was kind of going down paranoia lane, right? I mean, she soon as Cody is in there and she's looking at him like, you're the enemy and I don't believe you and I don't trust you. And then she just goes off and starts screaming. But before that, she had these scenes by herself where she's trying to navigate who is her friend and who isn't, whether it's, you know, um, Cyrus or Cody and um, her realizing that, you know, she's being drugged and being held 
and she doesn't know who to trust, she still thinks that Gladys is somebody who will come and rescue her, but Gladys is not answering calls. That's concerning to her. And so it's, she's realizing that she's kind of trapped in a situation. And the one person that does believe her, she doesn't trust him because of the drugs. And so it's so sad, but so heartbreaking. And yet she's playing it flawlessly. Whew. Please, somebody give her her flowers soon. And Please, give this woman an Emmy nomination. <laughs> right. Because we didn't get an Emmy nomination from when her when Liam died. We didn't get one right. from Brando. When Brando died, this woman has been like on drugs. Like she has done, Sophia Madsen has done just like flawless work. I'm not understanding why she hasn't been nominated. Right. So, I mean, even if she's not nominating herself, someone throw her name in the hat. You know what? We should do it, Tracy. We should go down and take <laughs> it to whatever Emmy world there is and just be like, hey. Here's our re- here's Sophia's real. Okay. Here's Sophia's real. Forget GH. Listen to the fans. The fans are calling for this. This is a demand. Seriously. <laughs> right. No, she was amazing. She was amazing this week. I also think that Brooke Care was amazing. Um, she pissed me uh, off, though. So I guess that's oh, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> I know I'm gonna piss off. I'm gonna stand beside her. Okay, stand, stand beside, beside her because right now I'm like side eyeing her. <laughs> I'm gonna stand beside her. her. I'm gonna stand beside her because I don't like when people be come, been coming at coming at her. So I'm gonna stand beside her. But yeah. I think like just her scenes with um with Hat Daddy. Oh she, yeah, the two of them as scene partners. I'm just like, leave Curtis alone. That's your daddy now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they are so, <laughs> like his care and concern for her. Mm-hmm. Um, just like what they are able to express together. I love her scenes with him. And I love I love her scenes with Vernie as well, with Stella as well. But this mm-hmm. week, her like navigating her feelings, understanding, um, minus the Spencer stuff, really all of the Curtis stuff, like navigating being a doctor and understanding versus being like a wife and a loved one and and wanting to help I just think that she played that so flawlessly and it was like the tone was like right on point um it wasn't too much and it wasn't too little she was just I mean this is like this is the kind of performance that you get when you are a vet and a legend and Brooke Hare is a vet and a legend yeah yeah I agree definitely that so shout out to brooke and sophia that's right <laughs> um so what's working for you i gotta go first um yes you're gonna go first. <laughs> <laughs> um what is working for me um friendships I am really enjoying um, some of these scenes that are really, they're like pushing forward plot, but also pushing forward um, the, just like the relationships. I cracked up when Ava and Sunny were on the phone together in their PJs. I'm like, yes. like Sunny calling Ava, like, what's tea? Like, what is going on here? <laughs> like, just like, oh, so y'all just besties in your pajamas, huh? Like the poor Charles pajama jammy jam. Y'all are just, you know, like it was, but it was like, how far have these characters come? And how much do like these actors love being able to play the that relationship with each other? Yeah. Um. I, so I really enjoy that. Um. That uh, dynamic. Um. Alexis and Gregory, regardless of how I feel about the characters, I do like them always using that like axe throwing set. So I enjoyed that. Dante and Anna. Um. They like even though they were like in a serious, in serious like conversation, they still had jokes for each other. Same thing for Dante and uh, Jordan. Um, the same thing for, um, just like so many people had like these scenes that like solidified like friendships and relationships, um, that push forward, um, plot a little bit, but also like push forward why we should care about them. So obviously we talked about this Olivia and Carly of it all, um, which was like the big one with the Maxie and Sam and, and all of these, 
um, kind of relationships that I think have been neglected um, to just advance plot um, was pushed forward. Um, also, Sante having a love scene finally on screen. I didn't put it in my um, in my favorite things. I want to talk about it as something that's working. I think a lot of like there's always this conversation about like Lulu waking up. Um, but we have, and we've seen and we've heard about Sante like building family and building relationship, but there had not been any real stakes for like Lulu waking up f- for Sante. And now, like, I'm thinking about it, like, okay, so if Lulu wake up, then what? Because clearly, da- like, Dante didn't thinking about her. <laughs> like, Dante has a whole life. He's like, yeah, you know, get back to the house. Um, because, you know, if Lulu wake up, she can decide what to do next. But it was never like, if she wakes up, what am I going to do? You know, so um, Sante is just working. They're like that slice of life couple. They're... I like them having their own individual stories and then coming back together and not saying that like sex or love scenes like solidify or make a relationship important, but I think it does show a level of uh, commitment to the couple from the show when we're able to see like all facets of them being funny, being intimate, being whatever. And so I really loved being able to see that from Sante um, and really being able to see them like highlighted as a couple that we should be invested in and care about. Because I was invested and I cared anyway. (laughs) 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 But like the show, just like really putting them front and center that way was really good. Yeah. Yeah, I did not notice that. I was like, oh, they finally got the scene. They finally got the love scene. That means the producers are listening to us. They're watching our show. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What worked for me this week was the ensemble bar scene. I think everyone acted their part great and fantastic. I loved it. It was comedy, um, particularly with Eddie Main hitting on Carly. (laughs) which is unexpected i was not expecting that and i thought it was hilarious and he was coming on strong too (laughs) and he didn't care that olivia was there that she was olivia's friend (laughs) he was like um you know we already know each other so i'm trying to get to know carly (laughs) i was like dude what a mess (laughs) it was a hot mess i also like the fact that People are catching on to um, bald headed, menacing dude. (laughs) Um, Because he seems to be too much in the cut and too much in the secret. And I want people to realize that this man is in the mix and he needs to be watched out for. So I like the fact that he kind of stepped out and was trying to hit on Olivia because now everyone's like, who is this guy? You know, I didn't like how he, well, Obviously, he got away with it by sneaking out in the back, but I'm thinking the more people see him in the scene, the more we'll get to find out what's gonna what's what's going on with this family. Yeah. I um, but I like that kind of mixing of stories a little bit because um, beforehand it seemed like it was basically only Austin and Ava that are really encountering him. So good that he's kind of stepping out and doing stupid stuff. Um, but I like the whole bar scene yeah I'm interested to see because like now because Carly obviously knows about Austin and Ava so when she finds out like about Ava or about Austin and B-Boy's Wallhead Cousins connection what is she gonna say about that like (laughs) you just say (laughs) B-Boy's Wallhead and White Cousin I didn't even say White I I know but I said it (laughs) He's a small headed white. I said deep, deep voice bald head cousin. Um the other thing uh, I thought was like funny to me. So first of all, Wally Curse is just like living his best life. He, yes, he's I having mean, a ball. <laughs> like um, and you can just see it all over his face. Like it's so funny. Like just like the way he is like like he got all this flannel. He he over here looking just like a full bum. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and celebrating it he's like yes i'm going to dive bars <laughs> yes i'm getting drunk every night so what <laughs> he loves me. I got no kids i ain't got no wife as definitely ain't got a shrew of a wife like you i think he enjoys calling livia a shrew <laughs> Yes. But what is really funny to me is that lisa la cicero is a whole baddie like 
Please yes. stop playing with me as if a man would not see that woman and be like, that's my wife? And like, of course, Laura Wright is gorgeous and all of that. And we also got to see how they like have just looked b- been beautiful for the last like 15 years in their yeah. flashback. But the fact that like Ned is not like trying to, or Eddie Main is not like, huh, look at this baddie that I'm married to. Let me get to know her. Right. It's yeah. so weird. I guess maybe they're trying to go with him liking blondes or something. Because that's what he said about, like, he was, like, talking about um, Nina and then trying to hit on Carly. Yeah. And then I think the woman he was talking to at the bar was also a blonde. Yeah. So maybe that's it. But, like, I'm sorry. But, the man woke up with no memory and you, they told you Lisa LeCicero was your, was your wife. And you were like, oh, my gosh, she's hella hot. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Uh, I'm, and so that's another reason why I kind of like bald headed cousin hitting on Olivia, because then it's like reminding Eddie, or at least showing Eddie that Olivia is not like someone to sneeze at as far as being a wife. She's hot. Yeah. And she's scrappy. And she got money and she could cook. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> so you I love feel like Olivia was sounding like me back in the day. She's like, my cousin's gonna come up here. Right. <laughs> and we was in business. I'd have called everybody up here. Like, yeah. the way Carly looked at her when she said that, Carly was like, okay, Olivia. <laughs> it was just She's like, their, oh. Their whole thing was funny. Their whole thing was funny. Yeah. Also, when I emailed you, Argenda, I was like, I just finished watching and now I'm crack shipping Chase. And Carly. <laughs> Chase is just such a passion around. I feel like because he Josh Swicker has like so much um like charisma and there's like not enough like men in that age range. He's so wholesome. He just ends up getting shipped with everybody. People are like, I like to see him with Liz. I like to see him with this person, that person, whatever. Yeah, remember we were talking about it when he was going through his single phase. Like he needs to have a real woman, right? And I did, I think I did, we talked about Carly. I was like, he needs yeah. to be turned out by Carly. <laughs> that's right but you know that would also mess up my other ship which is Chykel right know, it's a micro ship <laughs> that's where I wrote her. that's the crack ship of my heart you already know anyway we're getting off uh, we're getting off topic what's not working let's talk about oh. it. um Curtis is still not working for me <laughs> so tired of him I am tired I mean here he here Finn goes bringing his daughter to him and he's like I don't appreciate this ambush sir even if you don't appreciate the ambush you don't say that in front of your daughter I mean what the hell is wrong with you I just like ugh, I'm just like I'm not he's not he's definitely not working for me him and his attitude um Fizz Fizz okay so Sante has a love scene, a real love scene, hot love scene, and Fizz has sexy time on the roof, which is not sexy time because all they did was talk about um, godmother time, guardianship time, guardianship <laughs> time. They're in the dark. It's it, like on the roof in the middle of the night. Oh and my god! It's like the most well, romantic her setting. Head on him. <laughs> she leaned her and head. That's all she does. I'm like y'all could have like something. They were there was nobody around. They could have done anything and they just talked about they just talked side eye it was boring it was boring 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 terrible terrible. um i always hate cody so there's that um but those are you know things that are just not working and then of course Portia and how she's treating poor Spencer. I felt so bad for him. All he wanted to do was say goodbye. And she's like, you ain't got to say goodbye in person. I was like, ma'am, it's enough that you already got him to leave. And now you're just like, he, you can't even let him hug her goodbye. And then I, I don't like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but, and then she, then he, she's like telling Trina, oh, he just left. Like, and then insinuates that it's about, you know, little um, Ace. Chunk. 
Chunk. Oh, he's so adorable. That little boy. Um, anyway, I don't like it. <laughs> but I appreciate, you know, Brooke her acting herself off, so yay. But no. I have no idea what they're doing with Sprina. Um, I continue to bring my annoyance from this week or from last week to this week. Um when Spencer and Esme did that photo shoot, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I said, if I had tomatoes, I would throw them. What the hell is going on? Spencer, if Esme is such a good mother, which you're now telling Valentine, let that hoe move, move over Kelly's. Because the reason that you were saying that y'all was cohabitating at your grandma's house is because you couldn't trust her as a mama. You can trust her. Go do what rich people do. Get a nanny. Right. And split that time with that baby. Okay? Or you, you could move out. You know, if you feel that she needs a place to stay with Ace, let her stay at grandma's house and you can move out. Listen, do what baby daddies the world over have done and you not even the baby daddy. Go right. live somewhere else and split your time. It's unnecessary for y'all to be together. Let, let's let go. This is absurd and ridiculous. And so I'll say, like, part of what I was going to say is not working. I mean, I talk about this every week and I'll continue to beat a dead horse. So it's Esme. I think what has happened with GH, which is really frustrating, is that they do things just to do it. And it has, like, no build of character. Mm-hmm. So, like, part of what I was thinking a lot about was, like, um, the sex tape story. Like, so I was, like, thinking about, like, what Esme did that was, like, like crimes or whatever, whatever. And it's, like, we didn't even get real fallout for Jocelyn Cam around that. Like, I just want to, like, remind people of what happened to Jocelyn Cam, which is that they were violated they were recorded Mm -hmm. and then it was projected in front of them in their classroom and these are and it doesn't matter what level of experience you have how long you've been sleeping you know having sex whatever but it particularly was awful because it was their first time right so these are people who are still and again, you can be somebody who's been having sex for decades and you still navigating, like, you know, like feeling comfortable or uncomfortable. But specifically, your first time you navigating a lot of uncertainty. And this gets like projected. And then they don't have, I mean, the only fallout they have is like this article that they had to do. And then, like, we're supposed to believe that, like, nothing has happened since that nobody is like approaching Jocelyn and like knowing what happened that Cam is just in Stanford and it's not a a big deal then y'all shouldn't have done this don't do things that are so ridiculous and not have them actually play a role because like when somebody is a fan of a character like we're able to like understand so like i remember when like joss and dex were getting together i was like oh well this makes sense because like her sexuality was like so much of that was like stolen from her and like he like makes her you know whatever same thing with spencer when he came back i like i was like you know i remember when ava told him he was gonna like um testify against valentine and then she didn't right so I was like, when he came back and he was kind of stalking her, I was like, I mean, it ain't great, but I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I, I this is not far-fetched to understand why he would do it. Mm-hmm. When you have somebody like Esme, don't have her do these crazy things. You shouldn't, like, y'all shouldn't have written these things if you were going to still have her around. So then comes to, like, I talked about what she did to to Jocelyn and Kim, because I think that that gets, get, gets lost in like the conversation of what she also did to Trina. Mm-hmm. So this this woman like drugged her, like put her through the through the system, and now Trina gotta like smile at her and care about her kid. And and she's not even given like a moment. Like Trina is not given a moment or a person to vent to and be to be like, fuck that baby. 
You know what I mean? Because like she she deserves that. Yeah. That that Nicholas who didn't believe in her, and Esme who did all this shit to her, have a baby that now is disrupting her life. Why does she not get a moment to like say that this is a problem for her? Mm-hmm. And it really is all about the fact they're like I say all this to say that it's all really about like building up Esme and like propping her and not making and like trying to prop her in the eyes of the audience and what is sad is that crying white girls do work and so there are portions of the audience who don't care who are like yeah it's fine this is just a soap it happens on soaps and I and I and I will say that I think that if she if if not I don't want to say all because it's still a big deal but if all she had done was the Cam and Josh stuff and didn't purposefully frame Trina, right? If, like, Trina got blamed and she was like, well, damn, maybe this is the way I can get out of it and didn't say anything. Yeah. I think it would be, like, an easier pill to swallow. But when you write and you're not completely thinking about race in a situation like that where you should have been, then you start, like... it. I feel like I'm getting along with it. I know I'm getting along with it, but I'll, I'll make this comparison because I want to hear. Did you watch Bridgerton? Yes. So I think about Bridgerton and I think about like the character of Penelope. Uh-huh. So the books too. So the books of Bridgerton and sorry if you haven't read this or whatever, spoiler alert, I don't know. But like the for the books, like it was like clearly all white people. Like it was like the Regency era, you know, whatever. So whatever happened was like happening amongst white people. When they tried to, when they adapted it for Netflix, they like started doing backstories for people that wasn't there. They started like adding in like race dynamics that had never been added in the book. So they have these black people. And so like really long story short, they were like Queen Charlotte, who people people like would talk about as being maybe a black woman. She was white. But like Queen Charlotte like did these things to like let black people get in in like the regency era get like land and blah 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 blah. so there were like black people in the show and they kind of tried to explain it that way so penelope this character does like a really messed up thing to a young black girl mm-hmm. now mind you this wasn't in the book at all this is something they made up for the show but it means something that she did this to a black girl you thought like oh it's just like drama it's whatever no i see this as something she did to a black girl in the same way, so then you look and you see, okay, Lady Whistle now, who was Penelope, has like this beef with Queen Charlotte. And then you watch Queen Charlotte and you like, damn, this woman has like, it's like not even a generation that black people have gotten land and have like done this great experiment. And here you got Penelope trying to take her down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's like y'all tried to like do this story that was like colorblind or whatever. And you thought it didn't matter. But it actually matters. Like you actually have to take race in consideration because the optics are the optics. Mm -hmm. So with Esme, maybe if she would have done this to just white people, it would have been easier to forgive or easier to just be like, to like explain it away. But to have somebody who like, who just did all of this and like has racial implications, it's, it's a very, it's a tough pill to swallow that she is like still there still coming in between Sprina and being treated as like almost this like actual rival for this relationship that we never got payoff for. Anyway, all of that, that's my monologue. Sorry for going for so long. I'm just pissed off. That she's still there. Yeah, it's not working at all for many reasons. Pissed off. I'm tired of it. (laughs) I don't blame you. Unfortunately, it looks like they're making us live with this character for now. Um, and they're making us live with this character and we never, like, Sprina never got payoff. I'm not, I mean, I can't speak to, like, what other people want, right? Like, I'm fine with couples having drama and, like, having to overcome things. But the point is, you, like, go through something, there's big payoff, then you go through something again. Right. Sprina has not had the, the payoff to like show that they should go through something again. And that something certainly shouldn't be the same woman who's been around since the very beginning, who and who's done all the things that Esme has done. No. 
Find something else and get a nanny. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's understandable. Like, 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 like Spencer should be fighting a lot harder to be able to spend time with Trina. I don't know. It's just weird in that he's like like now he's like seeing her differently as may and i'm like i don't like it either um this is rich even if you live in with your grandma get a second apartment so that you get your apartment get a hotel <laughs> he can do so much we talked about that last week like they can get a hotel he can get his own apartment he can do a lot of stuff he does not have to be in the house with aura i mean with esme he literally has so much money he could be renting another place. Right. And it could be the spot where Sprina like meets up. Yes. Go do other things in the world. All the time. Trina should not have to come and see Esme and that baby. I don't care how cute that baby with, Trina could be living with Spencer in his apartment. Anything. Right. I mean, yeah. Not again, not, not that we want to compare Jax, but Joss and Jack, Dex are seeing each other all the time at his apartment. Mm-hmm. That could be happening. And I, I, it's just, I saw this thing. Um, it was like a, I saw it. Um, it happened to come up on my For You page that was like, somebody said or there are rumors that people don't want to see this interracial couple together i don't know or like the powers that be are like trying to like um pander i i don't know i mean we do have like this front and center story of molly and tj trying to have a baby they're interracial couple i think that part of it is that they don't know how to write black women um like they don't know how to write black women to be complicated and to be sexual and to be like I, I mean I don't know I don't want to put any I don't know these people I don't know these writers I don't know the powers that be these are not my, I don't I'm not defending them by any means and like maybe that's true but but I I do think look at look at they got Portia and they've had Portia and Jordan fighting about Curtis for years now. Mm-hmm. They don't let Trina do anything that is complicated. And they haven't in a long time. So I I don't I don't know what it is. I think that they need to fix a lot of that. And some of that includes Sprina, but it's it's not all Sprina. They need to fix the writing for Trina overall. Agree. What else is it working? And was that the only thing? <laughs> that was it. I've said enough. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all, for my rant. I'm just tired of it. <laughs> just no, like, you know, you got to apologize. We're all tired, I think. I think you're speaking to what a lot of us are feeling I'm right just now. Tired of it. Write my girl to have a backbone and get and to get her black blown. Okay. This is what I want <laughs> for my girl. Like, <laughs> Sorry, Tanya. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. Not for our knees. Yes, we do. Well, we want happiness. We will be her. looking away embarrassed in the same way I look at the scenes because, <laughs> you know, Eden and Tabiana are like my nieces. You know, like I don't want to see it, but I want it for them. Right. <laughs> So, like, <laughs> we want that for you. So, <laughs> so, anyway, so one of the things I wanted to have a conversation about was uh, it, just like over in soaps, like best recast. It really came up. I was listening to the Soap Opera Digest podcast with Kate Mancy, um, um, and she was talking about how she got the role. Like, essentially, they like sought her out. Um, and she has been really public about her um, her struggle with endometriosis. And so they they like wrote this storyline and they were like, we want you to come play this role. And she didn't even know it was Christina at first. They just like pitched a role in a storyline to her. 
Um, anyway, so just wanted to have like a conversation. I know you watch other soaps, um, like some of the best recasts you've ever seen. Ooh, so um, if we're going to start with other soaps, um, I'll, I'll do Young and the Restless. I haven't been watching Bold and the Beautiful long enough to be able to comment on that. Um, but for Young and the Restless, I think um, there's like two characters, there's three characters that have been recast a lot. Um, the most notable for related to GH is Phyllis. Mm. Um, so when Michelle Stafford left um, Young and the Restless and came over to um, General Hospital, she was recast by Gina Tononi, and Gina was awesome. Yeah, like, she was I like perfect. It was amazing, and I didn't even think a recast. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have replaced her at all unless you know. Um, Michelle Stafford was thinking about coming back, which happened to be the case. And I feel bad for Gina that that happened because she was so good. Mm -hmm. as like it was almost like seamless. Um, another character that had a lot of recast is Adam Newman. And again, he's such a, a, a titular character that him disappearing, something has to happen. Like, like he, like, he was off the canvas because he was presumed dead or he was in a fire or it's just all kinds of stuff. And they've had three major characters play him and they all played him really well. Um, and it's kind of like the Carly factor, right? We've had numerous people play Carly. And they're all good in their, except for one, it was really horrible. Well, <laughs> we're kind of good in their own way. And the same with Adam Newman. The, so the first one who was really, really good was Michael Mooney. He left because of some scandal um, internally. Um, some people don't even believe because it was never really proven, but he left. Okay. Um, and then Justin Hartley came in. Oh, and okay. He was there, and he played Adam Newman and he was actually good at it. And then he got onto a, 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 another show. So then now our current um, Adam Newman is amazing. It's almost as if we can't even believe that he's ne he, he's the third one because he always seems, his name is Mark Grossman. He's not on social media a lot, um, but oh. he's doing, he's amazing at it. Um, so yeah, those are some examples on Young and the Restless that were, you know, some really good recast. And now we have another one, Summer Newman, who, for a long time has been played by Hunter King. And again, I couldn't, I wouldn't imagine anyone else playing Summer Newman, but this new recast, Allison Lanier, again, amazing. <laughs> she has been doing a phenomenal job because her mother is putting her through hell and she lost her, her family, her husband and everything because her mom was tripping and doing some stuff and put her in the middle of it. And so Allison had to deal with pretending or at least experiencing that her mother died and now her mother's back and now she is trying to keep her out of jail and finally she's like i'm done i'm done with this shenanigans with my mom i want to start a new life and she actually had a really great episode where she came to this realization and then she decides to go on a roller coaster at the end of the night which is very random but she goes on this roller coaster by herself and she looked like she was having a great time. And it was like a biggest epiphany of her life. And it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, yeah, Allison Lanier, Mark Grossman, and then Gina Tononi, who's not there, but they were amazing in their recasts. They've taken over the character. They've embodied the character. And it's almost it, when when these when these new actors came in, it's almost as if they've always been that character. That's the hallmark of a great recast. Like you yeah. can't even remember the other one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's true because like, if you th I think it's also about like what um, the show puts into a recast mm -hmm. and like, um, so like I think about like Carly, for example, I don't think anybody's ever forgotten Tamara or Sarah, mm -hmm. um, but I do think of them as being like very different like versions of Carly. So yeah, I was like, watching Sarah Brown's Carly Live. Like um I like I started watching GH when Carly was in the panic room. So it was Tamara. Yeah. And so I also wasn't very even like attached to Carson 
as a story because right after she got off the panic room, she kind of was like into Lorenzo. Right, um, they were kind of broken up. Like, huh, let's look at yeah. what's up with this. <laughs> yeah, like, um, so I, so I, but I, but I do think each of them have a different iteration. I think you know uh, the the Carly, the third Carly, who we don't really talk often about. Um, what was like really unfortunate for her is that <laughs> they literally had Tamara Braun walk in on Sunny. So Tamara had had like these really high highs. It was like they thought that uh, Michael was dead. I remember that. Do you remember that scene with her in like the precinct going like just crazy good? Yeah. And then, you know, she walked in on Sunny banging reese or attorney anyway whoever it was one of the ladies (laughs) somebody somebody sunny was you know you know how sunny be um and so then like they had one day tamra brown walked saw it and then the person that walked away was this jennifer this third carly and so she just never had this opportunity to to like settle in or ground in the role because she also was then at odds with so many of the people who like are Carly's people mm-hmm. like she was at odds that's like when Jason finally like stood up to her and was like I'm with Sam leave me alone. you know what I mean like <laughs> that was happening why when this woman took over yeah so then when Laura Wright took over they took a lot of care to like ground her into the show if you remember they were doing like they had like film stuff that were like flashbacks with them Um, she had had like a pretty extensive relationship like laura wright and steve burton had known each other for a long time so they came in with like a a built-in like friendship chemistry that worked um so i think that that's like a mark of it like how much the show invests in the recast um I think that other recasts, um, something I didn't realize when I was looking this up was that Jeannie Francis wasn't the first Laura. There was what? a lady named Stacey Baldwin <laughs> who played Laura for two years before Jeannie Francis. Wow. Um, if you're a One Life to Live fan, there was two um, Dorian Lords before Robert Strasser. Robin Strasser is my Dorian Lord. I, I had no idea. Yeah, I thought she originated the character. <laughs> <laughs> Um, others, another soap that's not like that I watch that's not GH. Uh, I think that Greg Vaughn, who we who was like a recast of Lucky for us, um, right. who was not my favorite recast of Lucky. I think looking back, I think that he was treated unfairly. I think that he was like pretty good. The problem was that he wasn't good with Elizabeth, and so much of his story was with Elizabeth because when they put him with Maxie and when they put him with um. Yeah. Sam, he yeah. was on fire. It's just that, like the they were trying to like recreate like a lucky Liz thing that wasn't that wasn't there for them. Which is why um, the Niz affair was like hot because like Becky and Tyler had amazing chemistry. But then when Greg Vaughn came back, or not Greg Vaughn, when Greg Vaughn left and um, Jonathan Jackson came back, we were like, "You cheated on Lucky. We can't believe." <laughs> Then. And that's why I was almost I was really kind of glad Lucky or I mean Jonathan Jackson got to play him finding out because it meant so much more. Oh, I and, mean yes. Iconic. It was, it was iconic. And he I, wasn't even there for that long in the character, but it still it meant for so much more to have him be the one to be betrayed. Iconic Whew. scenes. Right. I don't care what nobody says. Lucky drunk reading them iconic drunk the sober, best- sober drunk like <laughs> i mean but the best part for me was when carly came in oh my goodness so good she was like they're busy running like farm <laughs> animals I was like i'm gonna go and then immediately <laughs> went to jason it was like you need to go get your baby <laughs> So maybe off over there with the people. <laughs> yeah, that was the best. Um, I also want to point out, and you might have her on your list, but um, Kristen Storms is didn't originate Maxie either, right? And it's probably like she's like the best, basically. Yeah, I knew Kristen Storms from um, Days because yeah. she was Bell Black. So I watched Days as a as a teen. Um, as a teen, as a young person, I grew up on days basically. I started watching days in the womb. Um, 
and yeah and so like that she was like my teen scene like that was my group I was in high school with them um and then obviously she was on D- Disney um and then she came on as that recast and I think I actually didn't mind the maxi before her I thought she was talented and I, I thought she was fine but I, I feel like you know Kristen Storm's iconic yeah. maxi you know another one from um Young and the Restless that I'm remiss is um, Victoria Newman. So Heather Tom originated that character. And again, I could not imagine anyone else play Victoria Newman outside of Heather Tom till Amelia Henley came in. You know, Amelia started off from All My Children. That's right. She was Mia. Yeah, she was Mia. And then she comes in and she has not left that show ever since she's been on young and the restless and she embodies the victoria character a hundred percent so and heather tom is really talented it I is was, it's very yeah yeah very talented the other she, another one is alicia Minshew coming on um as um kendall hart so like originally it was sarah michelle geller oh yes and then yeah. on, which i think her looking like she could be related to both erica and, and sarah. Helped. Yes. <laughs> like, um, I think the relationship, like the the rivalry with uh, her and Greenlee, like the frenemies with her and Greenlee helped, like really cement her. And obviously, I was a huge Zendel fan. Zach and Kendall, ugh, that was it for me. Oh yeah. Oh, Peter Bergman was not the original Jack on Young really? and the Rose. I didn't. He know. was not. <laughs> and and um, I I don't even remember who the other guy was, but. I wasn't watching when the other guy was, but Peter, again, iconic, has been his character forever. So. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, Nicholas Chavez as Spencer, yes. um, you can't forget him because he really, I mean, I think when he gets good writing, because I don't know what they're giving him now, but when he gets good writing, it's amazing. Um, and he plays a very heightened emotions really well um but I love Nicholas Betchel like I was a huge fan of of him as Spencer him and Tyler's relationship um as Nicholas and Spencer was so special I think that's why so many of us who who have been Cassidyne fans and fans of the show for a long time were so disappointed with where they took the Spencer and Nicholas relationship because right. that has been such a hallmark and cornerstone of a father son relationship for so long. You mm-hmm. like literally Spencer because Nicholas when they were like having him go like extremely dark prints and be like extremely unforgivable, uh, it's not, like with the Jason Drew stuff and like the like all of that stuff was happening, and I think his redemption was always Spencer. Yeah. Um, that was like the thing that grounded him that you couldn't completely throw him away because you were like, damn, dude, he's a good dad. Mm-hmm. And so to take that away from him was just like really difficult. Um, and, I, and I think that the thing that made Nicholas, that the, the Nicholas to Nicholas switch right. happen and better is because we knew we wanted them aged up. Right. And so it's hard because those kids were so good, just like Emma you know, like, I can't imagine anybody besides Brooklyn playing her, but she's 17, and they're, those kids are now, they keep pushing their age up. They're now 21, 22. Um, so when people, like, do, like, edits with her and, like, William, I'm like, William's an adult, and she's still underage. Let's chill out on the edits. <laughs> like, um. So, um, so when you're talking about Nicholas Cassidyne, like, that's why I kind of really hope that Tyler Christopher does come back because I would love to see those two actors, him, Tyler Christopher and Nicholas, um, play together in those two characters. And I almost feel like if Tyler Christopher came back, the relationship between Spencer and his dad would change because I don't think I never see Tyler actually going against his son that way. Um, he'd have to figure out. I know he'd have to figure out how to play it. I'm sure he would, but they would end up being back together. They would end up being back father and son. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's what, like when you say, when you talk about like good recast, you have to like think about bad recasts. And so I think that Marcus Coloma wasn't a good Nicholas. I think that I actually, I mean, I've we've been critical of him. Um, I think that Nicholas is a hard character to play. 
and a yeah. very hard character to get right. Um, and it takes a lot of nuance to make Nicholas rootable. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just didn't have it. Um, another bad recast, when they tried to bring Eddie Winslow to like replace Shamar Moore. Oh, 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 oh God. God. That was, that was so disrespectful. <laughs> going on it was not a good recast <laughs> so anyway the, character, the guy that plays eddie winslow is actually iconic in the eddie winslow character he actually had like a live with all of these great old school r&b um artists mm-hmm. about a couple weeks ago like he had mm-hmm. a live with shanice um oh, yeah, he was weren't they married or didn't well, no, he's like Shanice is married to Flex. Flex, that's right, that's right. Alexander, but he was there too. Flex Alexander was there, um, and they had Elder Barge, and they were all in a hotel, and they were just singing and having a good time. And I was like, "Hey, that was heck of cool." But don't ever play, you know, Shamar Moore's character. Oh that's- yeah, that's right, because Shanice was on Family Matters and said, yeah. "Yeah, yeah, that's right." That's why I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." No, they were, they were, it was special. <laughs> Um, it, it was it was a special time. Um, okay, well, that was fun. I wanted to just talk about recast. Like, like I said, I think uh, if you want to know more about Kate Mancy, you should definitely check out that interview for the Self Harbor Digest po- podcast. Uh, something I love about Kate is that she is a Fanola Hughes stan, um, which I love. Um, and I think that she brings such, like, she is very much into studying her character. Um, and she brings like very specific things I mean it was something I noticed like during even with Christina I I really I liked Lexi Christina's never a character that I've ever particularly liked but I think that Kate Mancy is extremely talented and I think she's a great recast Um, but it's like a specificity that she brings like even Christina wearing the the hoodie for like the gym (laughs) Yeah. When her when her and uh Sunny's gym, uh, when Alexis came home, she just like very naturally fits in with Alexis and Sam and all these other these other folks. So anyway, thanks for indulging me in the recast conversation. And if y'all yeah. have any recast, let us know if you're on YouTube. Tell us in the chat. Yeah, that was a fun conversation. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Free for all hot takes. You got any? Let's see. I didn't have a lot. Um, except. Yeah, I was a side eye and Gladys. Always. Um, I loved the. There was one line. I guess Carly was talking to Olivia about. Oh no, she was talking to Nina, and she was saying Sunny loved Carly, and now he's marrying you. And I was just like, because it was a good. I I didn't even think about it, but having Nina comment on you know what what Olivia's going through is 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 ironic because you know she was the catalyst to what nina is going or what olivia is going through um and so she she, we know that she knows what's going on um like she's still like trying to navigate the challenge between carly um but having her be you know talking to olivia about it was like a little uncomfortable and ironic and so that i just thought that line was super funny that she said to Nina. Yeah, I um I thought Nina is such a sociopath. <laughs> like, like she's like over here trying to comfort uh Olivia. Right. While hoping Ned like doesn't get his memories back. Yeah. Which is really weird. Um and I do think that there is something really interesting to what um sh- to like this comparison between like Sunny and Eddie Main and actually I think that what they're doing with Eddie Main is a little bit of what they should have done with Sunny. I think that um having Mike come back from Nixon Falls without his memory but knowing Nina yeah. um would have been really interesting and watching like Harley navigate and you know like, I think that would have been a really interesting yeah scene. I know you um, had mentioned that before like we wanted him to be back in the mix he was spending too much time away yeah Uh, yeah so yeah also um i if i was carly i would not be okay with my with my best friend planning my op's wedding 
uh, Nina, I just don't understand these rich people not doing rich people things. First of all, Nina, get a wedding planner. Why you got all your stuff on the Metro Court bar? Girl, this is not Applebee's. Get a por- pad folio, <laughs> take that shit to your office, and get a wedding planner. What are we right. doing here? And, and usually like, Maxie's the wedding planner. I know Maxie's got her hands full right now. Got them kids. 50 11 kids. 50 11 kids running the, the company by herself since okay. For real. I'm using it. <laughs> um, but then like it's also just like Nina, how did you think that you weren't gonna have your wedding at the Metro Court? So somebody then got stabbed and shot at the pool. And you have your wedding somewhere else? No, girl, you got to have your wedding here. And why don't the Metro Court got an event planner? Carly, Olivia, what was y'all doing? How did the Metro Court not have this? Y'all was missing this. I think Carly did all the planning with Maxie. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I need these rich people to do rich people things. Spencer, get you a nanny. Nina, get you a wedding planner. (laughs) Spencer, get your own apartment. (laughs) So right. just like rent a room long term at the metro court get a suite right um my only thing other comment was how many times did eddie hit his head <laughs> i'm just like i was really expecting him to walk away from this fight with a okay so what happened i'm dead now you know <laughs> like he got he got slammed against the bar stool he got socked a couple times his head slammed against the ground and still he's just still i'm eddie main <laughs> i was like that was crazy <laughs> um i love sunny and brick <laughs> He was like talking. So Brick had showed him a picture of like that dude. He, and Sonny was like, I met him and then he got whacked. I was like, right. get out of here, Sonny. <laughs> Please get out of here. Do you have any idea who whacked the dude? I have no idea. I was just like, he yeah. was such an unnecessary part, but I'm just like, who killed him? I have no, I have no clue. And I don't really care, except I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. And I, and I bet you they're not even going to think about it again. <laughs> um, do you have more? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I laughed at Hat Daddy when Jordan walked into the room and he looked at her like, <laughs> Hat Daddy is Team Portia, okay? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That he looked at her like, ain't you? Uh uh-uh. uh. What's going on here? He looked at he and he looked back at Curtis like, so you your wife can't come in the room, but yo, ex wife? Yeah. No, sir. Um I oh uh Portia talking to Spencer. I, Portia, you know, I'm gonna stick beside her. Um but the thing that I could not abide by was her trying to blame Spencer for maybe Sunny maybe getting Curtis shot. Yeah, those were definitely some reaches right there. Girl, you ain't never cared about the mob. Not Trina been besties with Joss while she was living right. in the mob compound for years and you ain't never had exactly. no problem with it. Spencer should have been like, oh, so Joss can't come over either, right? <laughs> okay. You living in Carly's house. She was Trina was literally living in Carly's house, but you but you talking about how you mad at Sunny. Girl, get out of here. That was like I said, I'm gonna stand beside Portia. I feel like there's too much happening. Um, I think that like I don't like what they have Portia doing. I don't like what she I don't I don't like that. And I also feel like Portia can like not like Spencer all day, and that doesn't mean that that Trina and Spencer shouldn't still spend time together. Yeah. That's, I think my point. Like, I don't like what, what she's doing to him. And also, I don't like that the two of them are just like rolling over and taking it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Portia, you don't make great decisions either. I yeah, I mean, people. and then Trina, uh, like, uh, as lovely as her conversation with her dad was, Trina should have went and looked for Spencer and be like, why'd you leave? <laughs> you know? Her dad. Mm. <laughs> or she, yeah, she could have went and visit her real dad, Taggart. 
where's Taggart? That's that's another thing I don't like. That's what's not working for me. No Taggart. And okay. you know, I've never been like a Gia person. I've always been like, why do we need her? I actually think it would not be a bad idea to have a Gia for a Gia uh, sighting. Yes. Because I think she she would definitely, I don't know why I think this, but I think she would keep it real. <laughs> Hella real. Agreed. And be a great auntie for Trina. Agreed. Um, I thought that t- I actually liked the scene with Trina and Finn. And mm-hmm. it just made me think a lot about like having more unlikely scene partners. Um, because I and I and how Trina is like and Tabiana is such a um, she's such a good scene, like a, like a scene partner for people that we don't expect to see her with. So, like, obviously, like, I'm like a huge Trost fan, have said this over and over, but like her stuff with Dex, her stuff with Marshall, it's always good seeing her in the mix, and I want to see her in the mix more. I do, I mean, I'll keep saying this. I would love for the gallery to reopen um, yeah. and then to see her in the mix again with people coming in and out of the gallery. Um, that just like put her in the middle of so many people and scene partners and stories. Um, and I think that that is needed for Trina right now. Agree. Um, I was surprised to hear Anna tell Dante about Pikeman. Like, hmm. Dante's still a cop. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what's going on? <laughs> why hasn't he figured out what's going on with Pikeman? Like, why Why is this new information for him? They're too busy looking at Selena Wu. Right. Okay. Um... Oh, weird Fizz conversation when he when Finn called Liz un- disorganized. I'm like, is she? I've never known that to be her a personality trait for her. And let's not give Liz personality traits for the sake of having conversations with Finn. I've never seen her house look a mess. She's always been organized, especially for somebody who's a single mom with three boys. Or maybe she is disorganized and it's because of Cameron who was the single dad in, in that household. <laughs> she kept the house clean. <laughs> I guess we have not seen the house since Cam's gone. Right. <laughs> um, and my last thing, when Carly was talking about how she texts Joss, I was like, oh, Joss is 100% laid up with Dex right now. <laughs> like, she was like... He ain't coming for you. <laughs> Her phone's on silent. Okay, Carly. Right. No, 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 no. That's not what's happening. <laughs> like, that's not where you're doing her. Are you about to spend the night in jail, Carly? <laughs> Your daughter's out of out of pocket right now. <laughs> that's the last thing I got. <laughs> Do you have anything else from the week before we preview next week? Nope. Nope. Um, okay. Monday. Olivia confides in Dante. Sunny lays a trap. Carly debriefs with Jocelyn. Anna is dismissive. Betty issues a progress report. Tuesday. TJ and Molly host an important meeting. Portia puts her cards on the table. Gregory puts Chase on the spot. Ava seeks reassurance. Dex has to scramble. Wednesday. Willow gets some welcome news. Michael observes Dex. More that Mex Kim. Um, <laughs> Trina confides in Spencer. Gladys thwarts Cody. Sam launches a new investigation. Thursday, Brooklyn plies Tracy with alcohol. Dante is wise to Cody. Felicia ponders her next act. Finn and Liz have a heart to heart. Uh, Molly shares big news. Friday, 
Sam is concerned. Sonny makes an offer. Finn receives shocking news. Anna is rocked. Tracy and Eddie Main bicker. Okay, when does Finn and Liz not have a heart to heart? They're all <laughs> heart talking. That's all they do. This is not new. He's like, what else are y'all gonna talk about? Like, what else is there to say? <laughs> They're gonna go into their notes on how they do their laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they so boring? Because like they're not good because they don't have good chemistry, you know, and their story is very, very boring. Like, who cares? Methods on how they buy groceries. Ugh. Um, <laughs> that's really funny. So, two pieces of news, like two rumors I heard. One, um, I heard that people they're in talks with Ted King, who used to play Alcazar. I would love if Alcazar was Pikeman. Ugh, I would get my whole life. But I'd be, I don't know. But I'd be interested. That would be so good because then it would just make it a lot more explainable as to why Cyrus is like concerned and having someone better than, you know, Ava Jerome's sister, what's her name? Crazy Olivia. Alex or Olivia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, oh, that would be good if the Alcazars were involved. I would love it. And then I- he would come back and try to get with Carly again. Oh, give it to me. Yes, do it. Um, I forgot about the second thing. <laughs> I had two things. I forgot the other one. Um, also today marks thirty years of Maurice Bernard and Sonny Grunthos. Thirty years. Thirty years. That's a lot. It's a long time. Longevity. Congratulations, Maurice. Be a better character, though. <laughs> Can't do that. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Um, do you have anything else for the good of the order? <laughs> no. Um, the twenty third, Ahsoka is coming out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. It's gonna be amazing. Um, We'll talk about it, I'm sure, when it comes out. Sure. Um, so y'all know y'all homework. One, leave us some comments in the YouTube notes. Two, go watch Awkward Black Girl. And yeah. we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. If I can figure out how to turn this off. <laughs>